So for our last set of problems, it says to finish up the unit, we will think about equations in the form y equals a times b to the ct. So all of those equations we actually did in the beginning of this section ended up in this form, right? So they ended up with a base, and then we had a number times t outside. If we leave an equation in this form, what does the value of c tell us about the growth of the equation? To figure that out, let's look at four formulas for this unit. For our example, t is measured in years. So we're thinking it's years just to kind of keep things consistent. It says p does not impact what we are looking at, so it is left in the example. So p is there to point out, right, doesn't really make a difference, it's just a starting value. So looking through these, this one means 6% growth once per year, right? A basic formula, one time per time unit, once per year. This one, if I type this in, this is 0 0.005. So that represents 0.5% growth 12 times per year. Because when I'm compounding, I'm getting less interest more often, right? So it's basically a little bit of interest 12 times a year. Here, this is a half-life equation. Now, if I had one half to the T, that means it would have or get cut in half every year. This one's happening slower from that seven on the bottom. I can tell it takes seven years or longer for the half-life to happen, seven times longer actually. And here, this is doubling a doubling formula and it takes 15 times longer or every 15 years. So basically, when the growth happens once per time unit, years here, T is by itself. So once per year, it's just a T. When it happens more often in the time unit, so here we get a little bit of interest 12 times a year, T is multiplied by how many times more often. When it happens less often, like having to wait for seven years or 15 years, the time unit T is divided by how many times less often. So to summarize, an exponential function in this form, right? Um, I don't know why I don't have it down here, but in this form, a times b to the t, or a times b to the ct gives the following information. A is still the initial amount, b is still the growth or decay factor, and c is the number of times the initial amount has increased or decreased by the growth or decay factor in one unit of time. The unit of time could be any of these, seconds, days, weeks, months, years, right? We did years up for our examples just to kind of keep things consistent. So we're going to read these situations, write a function to model each of the following situations. So if we start with 500, we grow at a rate of 5.2% every month but T is measured in years. So if I say 5.2% every month, that's 12 times a year. So I'm gonna write my base, 1.052, right, increasing, so we just added it on. So we have to, even though we know the monthly growth rate, we have to write it with years, so we're gonna to need to get this 12 times a year, right? It's happening more often than a year. It's happening monthly, so I do 12T. Looking at the next one, starting with 650. It decays at a rate of 16% every year, but now T is months. So basically T is months, but I don't get to decay every month. I have to wait all the way to a year. So first off, my base, 1 minus 0.16, because we're decaying, is 0.84. So we don't get to do that every T. We have to wait 12 times longer. Sorry, I got a keyboard. I'm pressing an extra button. Um, so to wait 12 times longer. So it's taking longer than the time unit, so it's 1 12th T. Or we could write it that as T over 12. Okay. That's, a, that's an exponent, I know. Pretend I wrote that up higher and this is down low. So the next one, starting one with 150, it triples every week where T is measured in days. So triples, it's been a while since we did triples, is just a base of three. So it's a week, 
but T is measured in days. So I have to wait longer than the time unit, right? Weeks take longer than days and they take seven times longer. So this is T over seven, okay? So that's that idea. If we need to wait longer than the time period for the change to happen, it's division. If we need to do it more often than the time period, it's multiplication for that C value. So let's see how these problems will look at Delta Math. They're actually a little bit more like a multiple choice question. Um, so looking at exercise six, and I also put the options because there's, there's a lot of different options on these, kind of like when we did domain and range. So it says the function f of t is 850 times 1.055 to the t over 30 represents the change in a quantity over t days. What does the constant 1.055 reveal about the rate of change of the quantity? So the first part should be easy, right? We're just picking growth or decay. It's growing, right? Because it's bigger than one exponentially at a rate of, now this is just, what does that base tell me about the rate? This part should also be easy. So it's growing at a rate of 5.5% every what? So the T is measured in days. This tells me it takes longer than a day, 30 times longer than a day because we have division, right? So it's going slower than the days. So if it's 30 times longer than a day, that would be one month. And we're saying approximately a month because I know not all months have 30 days, but this is taking 30 days, right? By that divided by 30. So it's taking 30 days. So that's why a month would be the answer for that one. So looking at the next one, the function f of t equals 470 times 1.3. And it's not a bad time to like pause the video and try these two and then come back. Just kind of look at them first instead of just listening to me. The function f of t is 470 times 1.3 to the 60t represents the change in a quantity over t minutes. What does the one constant 1.3 reveal about the rate of change of the quantity? So first it, we're growing again, right? And that percent... 1.3 minus 1 is 0.3. Be careful, right? That's 30%, right? 0 0.30 is 30%. Um, now, we are talking about minutes, but we're happening more often, 60 times more often, right? So 60 times more often than a minute is a second because there's 60 seconds in a minute. Last one, and as I said, really good idea to pause the video to make sure you do these because these are kind of tricky to think about. Um, so now we have 1,100 times 0.9945 to the T represents the change in quantity over T weeks. What does the constant 0.9945 reveal about the rate of change of the quantity? Okay, so here we are decaying, right, because it's less than one at a rate of 0 0.0055. So move the decimal to that's 0.55% every. Now this is not a trick question. T is just T, so T is just weeks, right? We didn't change that time, it is exactly what it says. So that's kind of where we started the unit or started this section of word problems with percents, right? It's just these basic ones. So when everything's kind of straightforward, it's just a 1T. It happens, this um, change happens once per time unit.